with the Porsche Carrera Cups. Looks nice up there on Castle Hill, doesn't it? Stephen Johnson has joined Aaron Noonan in commentary. Yeah, Matty, this is the last one of the weekend, and uh, it's situation normal. Craig Baird has dominated so far this weekend. He's picked up two race wins from two starts, the championship leader and reigning champ. Now, this is yesterday. Race one, it got a little toasty. Last round winner, Max Twig, the elite class champ, he had a spin. Uh, he wasn't the only one, though. Paul Kelly from New Zealand had one of his own. And then this one, James Bergmuller ends up in the fence. Mark Sini has a spin with left rear rim damage, and that left Baird to win from Nick Perkat and Warren Luff. Now, this morning, race two was held, and that's not how you treat your Porsche. Shane Smullen was off the road. James Kunduris in the fence. That car will not start this last race because of that damage. Paul Kelly popped the radiator. He's been in all sorts of action this weekend, and there was a little bit of a chat between the two elite class drivers when they were back in the lane. But back on the track, no stopping Craig Baird. Again, he won. Again, Perkat was second, and again, Warren Luff was third. So, Stevie J, this sets up the final race. 60 points on the line again, and Baird is looking good with the grid, the finishing order of race two. Yeah, absolutely, mate. It's uh, one of those situations where we saw one passing manoeuvre in, uh, in race two up the front, which was Nick Perkat on Warren Luff. All the action's been happening pretty much just sort of back end of the top ten and out, and uh, as you can see from the highlights there, it's... Uh, it's Quite costly back there as well. Yeah, of course, the elite class drivers make up the backbone of this category. Mark Sini is the man with the most round starts. He's in the number nine Hallmark Porsche. But the cars on the warm-up lap rolling around to line up. 14 laps for this one. Here's how they sit in the points. Craig Baird on top, 58.5. So Perkett is within one race win of Craig Baird. Warren Luff's right in the mix. Stephen Richards in fourth. And Shay Davies, who first year full-time in Carrera Cups, done a pretty good job. He's got a, a change this weekend. He was driving for Team Kiwi, but there's been dramas there, which is just the latest chapter in the litany of dramas with Team Kiwi over the last decade or so. He's now in car 88. We'll be on board with Richo. Steve Richards will, of course, be with Mark Winterbottom at the Endurance Cup, but he's in his regular ride, the laser plumbing and electrical Porsche. Top right of screen is James Bergmuller in the Porsche Centre, Brighton entry car 13 and Shane Smolan bottom right in the 56 car so we've pretty much got it all covered between the pros and the elites absolutely yeah absolutely you can just see here Smolan coming up to field up the back of the grid getting his tyres nice and warm Baird and Perkett sitting on the front row for quite a long time waiting for the back half of the field to form up now this year we've had 10 races of Carrera Cup Baird's only set the fastest lap but he's always quick off the start. He doesn't have peak speed, but he has it for long periods of time and they can't pass him. Perkat's angled, he's ready to get the jump. Lights out, away we go. Final race, Baird slow away. Perkat sneaking across. Warren Luff's made a great start. It will be three wide, down to turn one. Baird on the inside, Luff around the outside. But it will be the four-time champ who's got the inside running. Perkat covers, Patrizzi challenges Richards. Oh, tight, but Baird will hang on. Absolutely, you can see there, Luffy just trying to get and gets around the outside of Nick Perkett at turn one. Everyone, oh! Shane Smolin straight off the back of Tony Walls. Front both right. of them are done. Front They're done. Right damaged. They're both done, no way. Oh, Dushan Padiachi and Tony Bates rubbing on the exit of turn three, but it's Baird. It's Luff in second spot. Perkett third, then Richards, then Petruzzi. Just getting tight back there. We saw this similar situation in race two today, whereas Luffy got the jump on Perkat, but Perkat was able to get past him throughout the race and hold on for a second place finish. Luff's been consistent this weekend. He's yet to win a race since Johnny Richo, Richo. Richo. Richards down the inside. Perkat tried to block it, and he hits Luff instead. Richards down the inside. The man who gets off the hook is bad. Just all this is doing is you can see oh, there, Beto, and another hit. This is nuts. That's silly. Patrizzi's in the gap as well. And now he elbows Richards wide. There's no love going on here. They've got to understand, you won't beat Craig Baird if you bash one another up. This is stupid. There goes a front splitter. That's going to cost him a lot of time if that's his front splitter gone up over the bonnet there. But whose car was it from? It's from Nick Perkins. Look, yeah. that rubber lip that's the bottom of the front spoil the front splitter section is gone Stephen Richards lost that in race one yesterday that will reduce aerodynamic grip not by massive amounts but enough for the driver to notice it, ma it makes a big difference I lost the front splitter on my car you can see Shane Smolin up the escape road there with right front steering damage from that from that impact at turn one Tony Wall's limping back with left rear Michelin 
off the rim. Bad clear. Luff has Perkett. room. And now Perkett slowing, looks like. There's a drama for triple two. Coats higher Porsche. Has he got a puncture? Yeah, Everson could have a puncture there by the look of that. Um, or has he broken something? Just getting out of the way. So he's done. So a podium result will go begging for the former Bathurst champion. You can see here on the back of Richo's car, Shea Davies quite close. When he gets up a bit of speed, the back cowl actually starts lifting up. Now, I'm not sure if, whether that's a little bit of damage from the rear of that car or not. We'll see if that affects it for the rest of the race. Let's have a look again on board. <laughs> that is a Hallmark Porsche. Still is. Hasn't changed. It is just as close in the elite fight. Here's now, this the was the three wide, so Bed was okay as long as he controlled and commanded track position on the inside. Look behind for the elite class drivers getting together. Shane Smullen right behind Tony Walls, who's just a little bit oh. slower than he expected off the corner, and it's busted the right front. And that's where he's got that flat left rear tyre. Here we go on board now. On board with Smullen. Walls in front. Heavy contact. Oh. Now he's done. Game over. And this was wild and willing. Patrizzi was filling the gap that Richards and Perk had left from their bump session. Shea Davies is right among them too. And that's what has come off Tony Wall's car. Left rear puncture and rim damage as well. And Nick Perkat's parked and done. His car is in the lane. And he's a spectator for the rest of this one. So that hurts his championship because he was a real contender coming into this weekend and he watches Baird, stretches away, Luff in second, Patrizzi, Richards, Davies, Max Twig is the next car through, he is the first of the elite class drivers, so effectively the, the amateur gentleman drivers, he's not far off the pros and he's actually kept his car straight, which can't be said for some of them. No, that's right, I mean we, we did allude to the fact that there wasn't much action up front in the first two races, well they've certainly changed that in this last race. They must have hurt us. I was just wondering what Nick Perkett was doing, walking out to the track there. Normally that's an ominous sign, yellow flag for Shane Smolin's car up the escape road. Back, that, to, back to green from here on. And that takes away, Steve, a chance of a passing opportunity down there. Yellow flags, no passing. It does, it it's does. One of the few that you regularly have. Now this is a replay of Shay Davies. There's the splitter. We were on board with Richo when it flung up. Max Twig cleans it up on the way through as well. This is what we saw, this is slow-mo. Whack! Not what you'd expect down the pit oh, straight. Ah, now that tells the story on Nick Perkat's car. Radiator. It has busted the radiator, which in the early iteration of the Carrera Cup cars was very forward, and it was really easy to pop one of those with even the lightest of contacts. But these cars are the third generation Carrera Cup car that we've had here. Another car coming next year, which oh, has a paddle shift for the first time. James Bergman could have done with the paddles there. He could have, absolutely. But um, you can just see... That uh, radiator from Nick Perkatz, that was caused by that slight touch down into that corner as Richo was having up the inside and he hit the back of Warren Luff. So it doesn't take much to put, uh, put you out of the race in these cars. Steve Richards is the fastest man on the road. 115.4 last time around, but that lap time is pretty much within a hundredth of what Baird and Luff have been doing up front. So Paul Kelly down the inside, the Kiwi making a lunge. Missed the last round at City Motorsport Park, but he's... Moving on through the order, that's for position 11. And this was a replay. We saw this before Bergmuller giving Stephen Grove a little bit of a tap, and all it did was slow him down for the run onto the pit straight. So, if anything, nothing to be gained from that one. No, absolutely. And obviously, we're on board with James when uh, when he was uh, heavily into the back of, uh, of another car there at turn one. Out front, Craig Baird, margin, two seconds. There it is, Warren Luff, P2. Of course, we'll see Luffy with Craig Lowndes at the Enduros for Red Bull Racing Australia. But Craig Baird is the dominator in Porsche Carrera Cup. He's the four-time champ. He's looking for a clean sweep in Townsville. Will he get it? We'll find out after the break. Well, the Porsches are still purring their way. Reed Park, Townsville is the location. It is round four of Carrera. in third and the fastest man on the track. We're focusing in on the fight for 11th place here. Steve Grove, James Bergmuller, a couple of the elite class drivers in 
the Porsche Carrera Cup Championship. And they're having their own fight within the fight for both the race and their own series points as well, Stephen Johnson. In fact, I reckon the racing in the elite category is probably better than the pros half the time. Oh, I think you're right because, you know, they, they obviously haven't got... A lot of them haven't got the experience of the fast guys at the front, the pros. That's why they are in this elite category. And it is unfair to put some of these guys who are business guys that come and do this as a serious hobby uh, on the weekends. And they do a, a really good job. You know, some of the racing's been fantastic this year. And this championship's going to be closer than the pro championship. I had a question for you that's come in on Twitter over the course of the last 24 hours or so. Um, keep tweeting us questions and the like. We like to answer them when we get the chance in these support category races. Uh, I'm at Aaron Noonan. What are you at, JN uh, Johnson, Junior Johnson? Junior Twitter? Johnson, yeah. yeah. Uh, one of the questions posed in the last little while, which I'll throw to you, you're better qualified than I. Um, with the change to Car of the Future in V8 Supercars, there's some fans who would be of the belief that driving in Carrera Cup, as indeed Renee Gracie is here in the Fujitsu 255 car, uh, is a better proving ground and more applicable to the new V8 Supercar than the old cars in the Dunlop series. Your thoughts? Yeah, I think that that's absolutely correct. It's uh, uh, The car's platform has certainly changed a little bit with the, the size of the wheel, uh, the stiff of the platform. It's definitely a little bit more nimble car than last year's car, although they're proving not to be quite as fast. Definitely they do feel very much similar or a lot more similar to the Carrera Cup car uh, than last year's V8 Supercars and, and the previous year's has. So oh, look at this, Jay Davies locks up. He's got to go down the inside to miss them all. Oh. Well done, Michael Petruzzi just avoided the contact. Davies avoided hitting them as well. He made a minor, minor mistake, but it compounded into a bigger one. And he was very lucky. These two were luckier. They were very, that could have been a very, very ugly situation there. This has caused Warren Luff to just get that little break between himself and Michael Petrizzi, but, uh, you know, that was certainly one get-out-of-jail free cut. Big run by Richo. Patrizzi wide. Richard's lunging, takes advantage. Now, can Patrizzi hang on the inside? He does. There's a little oh, roll. He gives Richo a tap. But Richo stays on the throttle and drives away. Done. Yeah, normally, that's not a passing opportunity unless there is a big mistake into that corner. We were watching some footage of Richo uh, in the ad break with the car in-car camera. He's on and off the throttle through turn five and six, just trying to get some, some turn into that car. So we obviously had some understeer. Obviously not as much as Michael Patrizzi had that corner. No. Let's have a look again at this Shay Davies moment. He just gets the rear out of control. The right front's locked. He steers up the inside to miss hitting the other two. And he doesn't end up in the fence himself. So well done, everybody. And he's managed to rejoin, but obviously he's dumped all the time. And this was Patrizzi wide. Door open. Richo likes open doors, walks through them lots. Absolutely, and those opportunities... Oh, tight. Those opportunities you've got to take in this category, otherwise, you know, you let that opportunity go. It'll be a very, very rare, rare thing for that to happen again by the end of the race. So, yeah, well done to Richo. And that's the essence of this category. If you've never really watched Carrera Cup, it's about driver because there's limited setup changes you can make to these cars, and this man is one of the best in the world, Craig Baird. More race wins than anybody in the field in Porsche Carrera Cup. He's clocked up 54 now, and he's on target for 55. No one has got numbers like that. And when you see the, the caliber of driver, Warren Love, he's no mug. He's a great driver. Stephen Richards is a star. Nick Perkett's a Bathurst champion. But pound for pound, Craig Baird knows exactly what he needs to do in these cars. He's got one of the best engineers in Carl Batson and his team behind the scenes, who's worked with Jimmy Richards and the like over the years. Uh, when you put it all together, he is so hard to top. Absolutely. You know, he is definitely the man to beat, not only in Australia, but worldwide in this category. And, uh, you know, it just goes to show the only downside to what Baird is doing winning these races out front, you don't get much TV. So poor Jet Travel and Freeman aren't getting too much coverage, but he's getting the race results, he's getting the podiums, he's getting the trophies, and that's what it's all here for. Let's talk about this guy, Max Twig, elite class champion of the last two years. He's sixth overall and leads elite. He won the last round outright. They had a, a pair of endurance races at Sydney Motorsport Park as part of the Porsche Rennsport Festival, which was basically a festival of all things Porsche. It was a great weekend because we had a mix of some V8 supercar guys who came and drove the cars. Tim Slade, Lee Holdsworth, Alex Davison went back to his Porsche roots. And the Pro-Am co-driver combinations worked really well. In the end, Max Tweed with Luke Yulden ended up winning race two and won the round overall. It's the first time an elite class driver has won a, a race and a round outright in the series. And it's a format that they're really keen to use somewhere next year in 2014. They won't have the Rennsport event every year. They want to keep it for every two or three years to keep it special. But I reckon it's a format we'd love to see at a V8 round somewhere next year.
Yeah, for sure. You know, he's done a... Uh, Max is one of the nicest guys from, you know, I've, I've obviously had a little few dealings with Max this year when I started off in the Carrera Cup Series and uh, such a nice guy and drives really, really well. You know, he's been in this a long time now and he does a, a great job. Luke Yildon's had experience in these cars before. That was a good team. They did a great job on that weekend and to take the outright win was sensational for them and Max was just over the moon. And this guy that we're watching here on the Super Slow Mo, Craig Baird, had his worst Carrera Cup round in six years. He was seventh overall and it actually brought to an end a streak of ten straight podium results that he's been generating. He falls short because Jim Richards has the record of 13. So he's going to have to start all over again. Right? Well, he's got, uh, he's got uh, uh, some say youth on his side. Some will disagree with me, but he's definitely got youth on his side. And while you're driving like this, I think it's absolutely every opportunity that he's going to be able to break that record. He does a fantastic job. And, uh, you know, it just goes to show. Yes, he hasn't done the fastest lap of the race, but as you alluded to earlier, he's very consistent and he can punch him out lap after lap after lap. Now, we spoke just before, Renee Gracie in the Fujitsu car, just 18 years of age. She's the first female driver to compete in Carrera Cup. She's only done very small amounts of car racing. She's from karting. She's been thrown into the deep end here very much, but you know what? She's done a really good job. Some people say, hang on a minute, she's three seconds a lap slower. She's getting closer. Her fastest lap in this race is 2.2 away from Craig Baird. She's racing with guys here in Mark Cini and Stephen Grove who've got way more experience in these cars than her. She's in the deep end, but she's treading water really nicely. I, I was actually going to say exactly that, Nunes. You know, to race against these guys, you know, Mark Cini, Stephen Grove, who have done a lot in this category, you know, she's definitely come up. She was well behind them at the start of the year, and now to be right on their bumper bar, and probably one of the toughest tracks on the calendar, is a credit to her. She's done a fantastic job. Final lap, and this fight's on between Tony Bates and Damien Flack. This is for eighth. Actually, these two got together, remember, in the first round on the streets of Adelaide, and it ended up being a penalty to Flack and a busted-up car for Tony Bates. And it's not done with yet. This is also for second place in the elite class within the fight. So Max Twig is a couple of seconds down the road. They're not going to get to him, but... This will go right to the wire, but Craig Baird's got this one under control. Three seconds in front of Warren Luff. And oh, here we go. There's like half a chance got a run here. Down here we the go. Inside here. here we go. Bates is in really deep. He's got it sorted. So does this man. Craig Baird had never won a race in Townsville before this weekend. He's gone and won all of them. Three in a row for the series leader. He's done it in style. 3.3 seconds back to Warren Luff, who will pick up second overall for the weekend. Stephen Richards and Michael Patrizzi following them in. Max Twig on his way home. Position six and the elite class winner as he looks to make it three elite class championships in a row. He's beaten Dubashan Padiachi, who is classified as a classified, I should say, as a professional driver. So he's going very, very well. Bates is at home in front of Flack. And Paul Kelly will round out the top ten. So that's the final race of the weekend of career. A couple next see them with the V8 Supercars at Winton. They'll also be at the Mountain at Bathurst and the Gold Coast to round out season 2013. So that is the Porsches done. The Dunlop series is coming up a little bit later on, but after the break, we let Neil Crompton loose in the paddock to interview, investigate and interrogate.